Hey, painters, we're live from the patio in Colorado. Good morning. Hope your weekend is off to a great start. Thanks for joining me. We're here live every Friday morning on the patio. Uh, if you are just a beginner planer painter or you've just begun and you're working on your skills, this is the place to be. We're here to inspire one another, encourage one another, and uh, just try to work on our skills and our techniques and get to be better planer painters and enjoy it. Enjoy it. Enjoy painting. Enjoy the journey. So uh, thanks for joining us. And uh, today we are going to put another object in this fall harvest painting. We've been trying to get in the, the fall mood for painting outside, planter painting outside. So we started with a pumpkin, we added a spaghetti squash, and we have some challenges, you know, because the light and shadow. If you were with us last week, the pumpkin was the first object and it was painted in light and shadow. The squash was the second object and it was a day like today where it was overcast. So I had to go by memory. I did see the squash in sun, light and sun. And so we painted a bit from memory and a, and a little bit from live. And then uh, we're gonna add this cup. And I think what I'm gonna do is, you tell me what you think, but I am going to paint it as I see it today, overcast, which means there will not be light and shadow. It will not be a you know congruent, harmonious painting, but hey, let's admit it. This was something that was never going to hang um, over my uh, couch in the living room. It was never <laughs> destined to be a masterpiece. Uh, a bit of a struggle, but let me just say this before we start is that it's good to paint objects like this that you're not used to or to, to paint different objects you're not used to because as a planner or painter, it, we oftentimes try to rely on formulas and rules and it's okay to have a few of those, but um, it's good to create new kind of connections in your brain as your brain has to try to figure out colors, values, and temperatures for different and new objects like that. So that's what we're going to do today. Plus, we're going to talk about style. You know, we're going to chat a little bit as we have our beverage of choice about your painting style and how it develops and what kind of style you can develop. Of course, tips and techniques on how to paint this cup. I've already drawn it in, started it, and we'll have a live Q&A at the end. And uh, so if you're in the chat, say hello. AZ is with us. Good morning. Why not? <laughs> exactly, right? I mean, why not? We're just here to have fun and practice and try new things. So uh, that's what we're going to do. Glad you're with us, AZ. And uh, say hello in the chat if you're with us. I've got a quote for us to get us going here, quote of the day. And it has to do with style. It says, we don't need to impose a style. We just have to show up and be present to catch its unfolding. That's pretty cool. We don't need to impose a style. We just have to show up and be present to catch its unfolding. That's by Linda Sachashio, I think, is that she's a contemporary modern abstract artist uh, that I just found on the internet. But, you know, present to catch its unfolding. We'll talk more about that. I like that. So. Uh, hello. Okay. Hello, AZ. All right. If you are in the chat, say hello. And I'm glad you are with us. That's our quote of the day. And this live stream is brought to you by the new Facebook group called Learning Plan Air Group. We'd love for you to join us. Learning Plan Air Group. Head on over there. If you're a Facebooker, like I said, I never really was, but we've got people joining from, we got Bob from France. We got Tez from Australia. We got people from all over. It's really cool, inspiring to see what people are doing. So let's start, man. Let's paint. Let let the painting begin. I'm going to grab a big, uh, hey, AZ, if you're listening, buddy, we were talking about this, and uh, I did that. <laughs> I did, I was lazy trying to fix my brush because this was twisting and, and vibrating when I was painting, but I, I took that off, and I kind of like cemented it. Man, it's not going anywhere now, and I love this brush. It's a synthetic brush. I just ordered another one. It just seems to really have good bounce and, and good wear. Uh -huh. We got Joe. Hey, Joe, from from sc usa all right buddy thanks for joining us appreciate it and uh great to have you and so we're just going to start if you're just joining us we're doing a live and we're working on our planner painting skills tips and techniques so let's just get into it man um hey why are we painting weird objects and pumpkins on the patio because we love planar painting and when we go out to planar paint we want things to be automatic and ingrained in our brains so that we can paint quickly and adjust to the light and read colors and values and temperatures. And so that's why we do this. So um, here's what I'm thinking. So I'm just going to paint this. I'm going to paint this as I see it. And it's, it's a very, very cool object. Um, sorry, I just need to stick my head around the corner to look at it. But, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a neutral gray color, but it's, it's dark in value. So what I look at, first of all, when I drew this, let me just review this just real quick. You know, the cup is is about two heights, it takes two cups to make the height of the pumpkin. That's one thing I always try to draw. That's one reason we're here is to draw and to work on our techniques. And I put the axis 
uh, the structure line or the access point because I want the cup to be straight. I don't want it to tilt. And I talk about you know placement and proportion. And and I admittedly my proportions are off because <laughs> I try to I try to paint 20% bigger so you can see it so it comes closer to you. But um, I'm gonna try to paint this accurately with proportion. But I talk about pieces of light and shadow, placement of things. You know, everything has a boundary where it goes. Um, if the sun was shining, I would put this, I would back this up and maybe put this in shadow. But I'm going to paint it like it is. I've mixed up a few colors, a couple gray neutral colors using, okay, in one pile here, I think you can see this. In this pile, I used titanium white, cerulean blue, and just a touch of cad orange to gray it up so it didn't have all that vibrancy. And then in this pile, I just added a little more alizarin crimson and made it a little more violet color because I'm not sure which way I want to go yet. But let's just start. Let's just get some brush strokes on the canvas. All right. And I'm going to kind of check in. And uh, yeah, I like the control. Oh, like the uh, contrast. Yeah, contrast. Yeah. Thanks, AZ. I mean, it's been fun, man. And that's what I'm always trying to look at is, okay, light, shadow, warm, cool. And uh, same here, you know light shadow and so um you know warm cool and so when you're out painting you know deer or uh, people or, or barns or whatever it is you like to paint always be thinking about how you can create that so good point thanks buddy all right let's paint this i'm going to dip into uh i'm still using this gal kid light medium and i just ordered another i ordered another bottle of it because i just like this i like the syrupy liquid feel um, i was using liquid impasto for a long time and i'll continue to use that but um, I ordered, I ordered Gal Kid, uh, not light, but just the normal Gal Kid, or is it called? Yeah, just the normal Gal Kid. So it's going to be a heavier syrupy feel. And this is something that you use with you. If you're new, you know, something you use with your paints, you mix it in as you go from thin to thick. Okay. And so whatever you're painting, um, when I paint this, I look at, I look at a lot of stuff, you know? Um, but look at the lines of how the, the cup is shaped, you know, and I look at the negative space. OK, this is called negative space. There's nothing there. And I look at the negative space and then I look at the positive space, the cup, and I look at the angles of the cup. And then I use my brush to carve that in. That's how that's what I do. OK, so I'm just going to get a basic. My basic colors on there. And that's pretty. I like that color. This other color. Let me just put it on. This other color is a little more rich and vibrant. It's got more alizarin crimson. I think I put some some ultramarine blue in there, but let's just throw it on. Interesting. It is. Yeah, it's a little more purplish, but that's cool. That's OK. OK, so understand this. That's a white cup, right? But it's not white. So if you're painting something white in nature, it's, it's usually not white. It absorbs right now. This is absorbing the colors the reflected light from the sky, okay? Now, if the sun were shining, what you'd have to take into consideration is the reflected light of the pumpkin and the squash. It would be reflecting into the cup. And that's why I chose this cup of hot cocoa because I was, I was hoping that the sun would be out. And I was really looking forward to painting the reflection colors of the pumpkin and squash, but hey, that's okay, man. So you just have to, when you're a planner or painter, you got to make adjustments and decisions, you know, and that, that's my adjustment. That's my decision. Hey, let's talk about painting style. And I'd like to hear your comments on this too. So style, what is style? I mean, painting style, it's like, it's kind of hard to explain, right? I mean, it's part technical, like, Hey, I'm a realist or Hey, I'm an impressionist, but it's also something more than that, right? It's like, without getting too weird or philosophical, it's your inner voice. It's what you it's what you want to say on the canvas, right? It's what you want to portray. It's why you paint. So so let me just ask you that. You know, why do you paint? Um, uh, what do you want to say through your paintings? You want to say anything? And then how do you want to say it? So think about that when it comes to style. But um, before I take a few more strokes, uh, point number one, I got three points on style. I'd love to hear your feedback about what your style is, how you came to get your style. But um, Look at, if you're new and you're just starting, like, man, what's my style? I got to find a style. Let it, let it happen organically and naturally is, my, is, the, is the main thing of this show today. But, but first of all, study contemporary artists, those artists that are alive, that, whose work you're attracted to. But also study the old masters. Study those artists that are dead, that are famous, and see which ones you're attracted to. 
and then copy them. Just copy them. That, that's my personal, it's okay to copy at first. I mean, it's okay. That's how you learn, right? You can't learn, you know, unless you're just a genius like Michelangelo or something, you, you got to copy other people to get your footing, you know, to learn and see how things go, how it works. And then, so keep it broad in the beginning and then experiment, you know, experiment with all different kinds of things, you know, kinds of brushes, mediums, um, experiment with different techniques and different things. And that's what I would suggest firstly, is just, you got to keep it broad. I got to get this line right, right here on the cocoa. It's, it's a geometric shape. So I got to dig it out of the, that's about right. Like that. I just want to get the right shape there for this cocoa, by the way, the cocoa color I got, um, I did a little, there's, there's a lot of harmony with purple or violet in this painting. And so when I mix up a gray, I try to keep it harmonious with the rest of the painting. So if you're choosing to mix up a gray color or a neutral to start with, you know, why not, why not choose, um, you know, blue and, and, uh, you know, red and blue to get your violet and then, and then tone it down with an orange to get a violet gray. You see what I'm saying? To get a violet neutral. That's what I did, you know, to get the cup color. And I did the same thing with the cocoa. I just, I put more orange in it in this neutral gray, violet gray to make it the cocoa color, you know, brown, warm. And that might even be, sorry, I got to look around the corner here. That might even be darker. So we can experiment with that, but um, let's just look at this. It's, there is some, there is a little bit of a darker color. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go into a lizard and crimson. It's a little bit darker right here. It's not really necessarily like a, a shadow shadow, but it's a little darker. So let's go into a lizard and crimson, ultramarine blue. Let's just take some of that cocoa color, mix it in to kind of gray it down a bit. But I want it to be darker, more ultramarine blue. And there's just a little dark spot right there coming from the pumpkin, like a, just a, a shadow a bit, you know, like right, right there. Yeah. So that's a neutral color. It's a neutral gray, but it's in, it's in kind of shadow a little bit, even though there's not a stark shadow today. So I just want to put that there on that side of the cup right there. And, and just kind of, it helps show the form of the object, you know, so right there. And then the next one would be reflected light that we want to look at. There's reflected light on that cup, on the handle. Uh, I didn't paint the handle yet, but uh, if you're in the chat, say hello. Welcome. We're doing a live here. We're trying to work on our skills for plein air painting. Tell you what, the fall colors are really awesome out here in Colorado. It's been fun painting the fall colors. Not sure where you live or if you have fall colors, but uh, um Gay Z is saying about style, it's what you like to paint. Exactly. It's uh, that's what happened to me. And that's a good point. AZ is it, it's like when I first started taking art classes, it, you know, I just like, I like to be, I love the mountains, right? That's why I live here. That's why I play here. And my family, we play here, we live here, we love it. So I'm naturally drawn to like the beauty, you know, God's beauty in the mountains. I mean, I just love it. So that's a good point, you know? Hey, uh, I forgot to show you this, man. I usually I usually show you the paint the painting from the week before. It's kind of embarrassing, but <laughs> I'm going to show you my very first still life painting. All right. Actually, I'm kind of I'm kind of hesitant to show it to you. <laughs> but this was painted in 2004 of October. October 11th, 2004. So check this out. You know, so if you're just a beginner or thinking about beginning, it's kind of hard to get that like so you can see it camera's weird this way this way this way okay but notice the wash it, i had like this really thin wash out here it's not very thick like i'll try to bring it closer but you can see like a little bit of a little bit of thickness on the flowers but that's my first masterpiece so you know hey look look how crappy this is and you can you can start and you can improve too so there's one thing that i can take from this is that i haven't really improved at all um, <laughs> no so this was painted uh on a frederick's uh, Frederick's nine by 12, uh, plein air panel, October 11th, 2004. That's when I started, um, taking classes at the art students league of Denver. And, uh, as the AZ was just saying, you know, I was, I started out broad. I started out taking like lots of classes from different instructors. Like we had to paint like nudes and stuff like that and figures. And I did all that. And if I had been drawn toward portraiture or portraits or figurative painting, I would have went that direction. But something drew me toward outside. So that's why I started painting outside, you know, but 
you know, it's, uh, it's fun to look back at those old paintings. It really is. Um, but let's move on and I'm going to, I'm going to get that handle in there real quick. I'm just scooping up real thick paint, you know, just cause I feel like it, just cause it's fun. And I'm going to try to follow the shape of that handle and just one, one smooth stroke, if I can do it and just come around. Didn't really work that well because this is all dried up, but, um, there's the handle. I just want to get the right placement of that handle in the right proportion. It's thinner down here and then thicker, thicker right there. Okay. And then there's reflected light on there that I want to paint. So again, just sticking with my shape, I'm going to try to erase these, these lines, my drawing lines right here, this dark lizard and crimson color. I'm going to try to get rid of that. And then underneath the cup, we talk about a core dark. Um, you could use just a pure color sometimes or whatever, but right now I'm just going to use, I'm going to use ultramarine blue just to kind of sketch in where that the bottom of the cup is and just get that, just get that core dark in there right there to show the bottom of that cup right there. And then we can just kind of like, you know, bring this color up just a little bit like that. But anyway, talking about style, you know, um, again, if you're in the chat, say hello and if you're watching our replay, leave us a comment, but we're talking about how to find your style. I think number two is, you know, the second thought that I have about style is there's, you know, there's no pressure, right? Let it develop naturally, let it come out naturally. And then once you started broad by following all these different painters, and then, you know, like AZ was saying, what you're drawn to, then I think you want to try to follow like maybe three to five painters that are, that, that are either in realism or abstract art or pressure, whatever it is you want to categorize categorize it as and then follow those three to five and kind of really start to specify really start to zone in on the, their techniques and on how they do it and then um slowly and eventually your own unique style will come out you know so we got somebody else joining us here they want me to get my the foothill phantom hello foothill phantom thanks for joining us man we're just uh working on plein air skills and techniques but um you know then you gotta once you zone in on three to five other painters that you want to follow, then you got to try to find and think about what your own unique style is going to be, you know, like, what is it that's unique about what you do, you know, and what you want to say in your voice and why you're saying it. So it's like, you know, why do you paint? What do you want to say? And how do you want to say it? You know, and then be purposeful, be purposeful about your, um, sorry, I'll get back to painting. Be purposeful about your education and your inspiration. That's why we're here. You know, so join in with other people that are like minded and uh, and be purposeful. Join some groups about getting in and and learning from other people like that. All right. I'm just going to there's some there's some reflected light right here. The sky need more need more titanium white. But it's it's on the shade. It's hitting the sky light is hitting right here on this handle. So I want to show that there. It's also coming around here to help me show, man, I've had too much coffee, my hands shaking. <laughs> I want to show the, uh, the shape right there. So there's reflected light there. And then also back here on the back of the cup, right back there, there's reflected light. So as you're painting outside, or still life for practice, think about, think about elements of light and go back last week, a couple weeks ago, we talked about that elements of light and shadow. You can't just paint something and make it two dimensional. You got to bring it to life somehow. So that's why we're doing that. We're talking about, we're talking about light shadow, cast shadow, highlights, reflected lights. Okay. So um, in the front of the cup, it's more titanium white. It's very, very cool. I'm going to go titanium white and a little bit of phthalo blue and just really make it a cool, cool white color right here and just kind of describe the shape of the front of the cup right there. And then we can go like this and then show that curve right there too. So that's pretty thick and that's pretty good. And then you could also use, like you could use a palette knife, right? I would encourage you to experiment with a palette knife. So um, let's go into, let's go to this pile right here, the cup color. 
and add a little more titanium white and a little more a little more phthalo blue because there's reflected light coming out from the bottom too so i could go like this with my palette knife just up like that and just show that with one stroke like that and make that that part just really really cool because there's reflected light down there and a palette knife is sometimes a nice way to do that you know it doesn't really matter what direction so that's kind of our cocoa cup right now and then on the back of the cup the back of the cocoa we could put ultramarine blue to make it darker, alizarin crimson, but in the back of the cup back here, you know, it's just, it's darker right back there. So that's kind of nice. That kind of brought, that kind of added a three dimensional look to it. I like that. Sometimes you get lucky, right? All right, right here. Okay. And I'm just doing, I'm using real thick paint, really thick paint. So I'm just looking around the corner. Sorry, this is such a big, it's an 18 by 24 canvas. But, uh, okay, hey, let me say this the third tip real quick about finding your style. And if you have comments about style or how you came to find your style, let me know in the chat what you think about painting style. Um, you've got realism. You've got uh, abstract. You've got, uh, you've got impressionism. You've got all kinds of, like, pillars of style. But lastly, you know, um, as I was saying, getting groups, like painting groups. Are you guys in any painting groups? I mean... That's why we gather here for these shows and we have these, the Facebook group and is uh, you want to listen to what other people say about your work, you know, like, Hey, I really love that you, your vibrancy and your colors. They're so, or I really love your brush strokes. They're really so vivid or I love how much paint you use or, and then listen to that. And then maybe that's your kind of your unique voice or unique, your unique angle about your style, you know? And so, uh, you know, lastly, let me just finish up with style by saying, um, that it will, it will appear. It will appear. You just got to be patient and it's miles on the brush and it takes a while and uh, it'll come out. It really will. And that's, that's what the quote of the day was just telling us. She's like, you got to just stand by and watch and wait for it to appear, appear you know? Um, but as I, as I paint this cup, uh, I really want to, I really want you to understand that this white cup, okay. Of cocoa, it's, it's not white and it's not light. It's dark. The value of this is uh, it's darker than the tablecloth. This is probably my lightest light. So I'm always comparing and bouncing around, you know, uh, planar painting is a comparison game. You really got to get good at comparing colors, values, and temperatures. So when I compare this color of the tablecloth to the color of the cup, this is darker, you know, like squint your eyes to, to kind of, and I can see it's, pre it's pretty dark. So I'm just going to keep refining this cup a little bit and throwing colors in here until I find the magic formula. You know, that's, that's what you do. It's really searching. You know, it's very uncommon that you just, you make one or two brush strokes and you get it and nail it. That's not, that's, that's very uncommon. Maybe even once you paint it for 30 years, but uh, you got to search and you got to find, but the more you practice, and I'm going to take the cup color and I'm going to go and dig into the highlight just to tidy it up a bit right there. So now my highlight looks a little bit better on the cup and I could do the same over here, but I'm just searching for cup color. I'm leaving that reflection there cause I like it. And then, uh, you know, we could go a little further, but, um, what else can we learn from this painting this cup right now? You know, uh, okay. Here's, here's one thing. Remember, remember the kind of vague rule of warm light, cool shadows. Okay. Warm light, cool shadow, warm light, cool shadow. When you have cool light, like today, uh, yeah, thick over thin AZ. Exactly, man. Thick over thin. That's what you really got to do is, is start with your wash, go thin. And then, like I was saying, you're searching, you're searching. I mean, I spent 80% of my painting searching. And I, I call it the abstract stage. People call it other names, but to find the right color value and temperature. And I'm, and I'm, I'm just a thick painter. Maybe AZ is too. I don't know. It sounds like it, but you know, don't be afraid to use some paint, man. Paint like a rich man, right? So uh, paints are expensive. I know I get it, but cool light. Look for, look for a warm shadow there. So let me just kind of, let me, we got time. If you're, if you're cool with it, um, 
that I'm going to look. And it's not like there's this big, brilliant shadow, but I want to teach you to look for subtle, warm shadows when you have a cool light. So if you're outside painting on a day like today, you might say to yourself, well, it's just a tonal painting. There's no light. It's just, it's just, there, there's, well, there is, there, there's light. I can see it. And there's light and shadow a little bit. That's why the cup was a little bit darker, you know, over here, because there's a little bit of darkness over there, you know, shadow from the pumpkin, the cast shadow of the pumpkin on the cup. Okay. So I got to look at that and make sense of that. But, um, let me just try to put a couple, let's see what you're saying there, easy. Tuesdays, nine to 12 senior center, Colorado Springs have a gathering of oil painters. Cool. Oh yeah. You're in, you're in the Springs. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. You got Pike's peak there, man. Have you painted Pike's peak? I I've, I painted that so many times when I, li I lived in Castle Rock and, uh, it's like the nicest 14er, nicest mountain, you know, around, but exactly, you know, AZ, I mean, go paint with it. That's pretty, pretty cool. Senior center go. Yeah. Painting, plein air painting. It's, it can be tempting to go solo and to just kind of go out in the woods or just, just stay by yourself. But it's like anything in life. And I, I tend to be more of a solo guy. <laughs> I, it, it, I'm kind of an introvert, even though I do these videos, but it, um, it's good to get out with groups of people. And that's, what's great about planar painting is you can go out even in today's era of COVID and everything is you can do it safely and spread out with lots of people. And you can encourage and inspire others as I'm sure AZ does. And uh, they can do the same for you and they can point things out about your work. If you have an open mind that, that you may not have thought of. So, but yeah, warm shadow. So what we could do is we could mix up a, Let's, we'll just make this the last thing that we do here. We could mix up, so cool light, warm shadow on the cup. Is we could mix up a neutral gray, again, from violet, because I want harmony in my painting. So I'm just going to have reds and blues in here. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to warm it up. Maybe a little yellow ochre in there. And this is my shadow, cast shadow of the cup. Maybe a little cat orange, even. Um, heck, I don't know. Maybe a little more cerulean blue. Yeah, like that that quorum that I like to do a warm and a cool. Um, you can you can mix a warm puddle with a cool puddle to find. Oftentimes, that will be my missing ingredient to find that that color I've been searching for. Uh, but this is okay. I'm gonna go with a little more yellow ochre and make that my my warm shadow. Let's just see, let's just see how it looks. Pretty thick paint, big number 12 brush. But if, yeah, so around the cup, there's just a, just a slight, a slight, slight shadow, not much, you know, on the tablecloth. So we could put that in there. Okay. So, so none of this makes sense technically, right? Because we, <laughs> we've got, we've got light and shadow, light and shadow. And, and this, this part of the painting, we're just, we're just working on for skills. This isn't like a masterpiece. So when the light is cool and you have a cool object, look for warmth in the shadow. And, and I don't want that shadow to be too dark, right? Because then, then what I'm saying is that it's light out and there's light, you know, you either got to paint in the light family or the shadow family. And you can't, I can't go and make that too dark like this. You can't do that. So that's how I would do that. Um, I'm trying to think like you might see a couple a couple highlights on that cup that are really brilliant, you know, like maybe like right here, a little more brilliant highlight, titanium white, cerulean blue or phthalo blue, just really cool, really bright color value. Same here. We kind of lost some of that, like right here, thick right there, you know, something like that. So that kind of maybe describes it a little bit better, but, uh, all right, so we'll keep cruising along here, but we did talk about style. Hey, like I always say, it's miles on the brush. You got to persist. You got to you got to put some miles on this thing right here, <laughs> and your style will come out. It will come out. You know, paint paint from the heart, man. Paint from the heart. So, um, hey, let me know what you're struggling with. Let me know how I can help. These videos aren't for me; they're for you. So, what what kind of videos would you like to see? Next week, I'm going out to do fall aspens. How to paint an aspen tree. And that's going to be real fun. But if there are other things I can help you with, that perspective video that I did a long time ago, 
on the street with the mountain in the background. It, it was done because a subscriber said, hey, can you do a video on perspective? So I do listen. It's hard to do it like every single time. But but if enough people say the same thing, I do a video on it. And um, people didn't watch that video, by the way, because my sound quality sucked, I think. But, uh, but let me know what you're struggling with and what you're working on. Hey, Dan Patrick is with us. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dan. Glad you're with us, buddy. And uh, Dan tunes into the show regularly. He's from South Dakota. Um, and becoming a, a good plein air painter. He started selling his work, which is pretty cool. And so um, let's, uh, let's get in a real quick live Q&A, okay? Just real quick, and I'll start it off. This is a, this is a question we get. It's, uh, should I sketch? You know, you know people do a sketchbook out there, plein air? Should I sketch before I paint? You know, should I, should I bring a sketchbook and should I sketch? Tell me your thoughts. What do you think? Do you guys do that or do you not? I don't. I did at times. I don't think there's a right or wrong answer. I'm just going to talk to you real quick about why I don't is I do my sketching on the canvas. You know, I do my drawing on the canvas. Um, but I think a sketchbook is a good idea, especially if you're a beginner, because what you do is you just basically do a quick five minute sketch of the composition of what you're looking at. And it, it gets your brain thinking about what attracted you to the scenery in the first place and why you want to paint it and what you want to convey through your painting. So and it can help you just kind of get your light and shadow. If it's the sun shining, you kind of just kind of, okay, here's the light pieces. Here's the shadow. Here's what I want to do. And then when you get to your paints, you already have a bit of a roadmap. So I think sketching can be good. Personally, I just am in a lot of times just in too much of a, <laughs> a hurry to get stuff on the canvas. And I do my drawing on the canvas first is what I personally do. But if you have questions, fire them at me, comments, suggestions, whatever. Uh, we'll stick on here for a couple more minutes and have a couple more swigs of coffee before we go. But I just want to encourage you guys, hey, you know, um, stick with it. Keep painting. I'm glad to hear that AZ does that, that thing at the senior center. That is very, very cool. And I myself need to get back out. I was I belong to I used to belong to a Colorado plein air painters group. We would go to shows and have your, your paintings and galleries and stuff. And I stopped doing that. But I mean, I probably need to get out and do that myself. So it's a good reminder. The Foothill Phantom says, just tried it recently. It helped, I think. Good for you. Good for you. I mean, you got to you got to try different things like that. And um, I would uh, encourage you guys to, to kind of get connected, you know, with, with other painters if you haven't. So at least online like we do here. And so I want to encourage you. I want to uh, tell you to keep going and keep pushing, keep trying new things. Try some things this week that, that you haven't tried before. Try using a palette knife. Try painting a little more abstract if you're tight. Try painting more, uh, more tight if you're an abstract guy. And, uh, you know, explore explore different styles and different tactics and techniques. And, and just keep going, man. So uh, I'll respect your time. And we'll leave it there. Let's just check real quick. Don't mean to get my mug in here. But we'll, uh, AZ says, small canvas till uh till it right then then a big canvas yeah i think i know what you're saying there small canvas and then a big canvas you know what i was thinking of doing was you guys should try this i think i'm going to try it have you ever taped off your canvas and then done like 15 minute paintings in in the squares like speed drills have you ever done that az or any of you guys ever tried that like put some blue painters tape in here and do do four different paintings just go out at sunset take one hour and give yourself 15 minutes in each square and do that. I think I'm going to try that in the next week or two as kind of a, uh, you know, we always got to be trying different, different things to improve our skills. But thank you for your comment, AZ. Thank you. The Foothill Phantom says, sorry, I don't mean to get my mug, but I got to read it, get in your, your face. But I'm going to try water and reflections. Yeah, good for you. Good for you. Try water. You know, it's water's tough. But um, don't don't paint the water. <laughs> I've got a video on that too. But don't you're not painting water. You're painting the light on the water. You're painting the shadows in the water. You're painting colors, values, and temperatures. And so don't freak yourself out about water. Just uh, just paint what you see. But yeah, good for you. That's challenging. So I'm glad you took that on. And Dan says yes. I have four small loose paintings. Yeah, I, I think I'm generally a. That's a good point. I'm generally a larger canvas guy out there. But I think that it's good sometimes to paint with a small canvas and maybe even a big brush. Like I always talk about is economy of brush strokes. See, see how few of brush strokes you can use to paint that painting. See the painting as bigger shapes and really try to just, you know, do the mountain in a couple of few brush strokes and the field 
you know, in a couple short, just get the right value and the right temperature, you know, because a beautiful painting, if you just get three to five structural values, I like to call them, if you get those in place, uh, you can have a beautiful painting. It does, you don't have to paint every leaf, every bush, every, every single object. So um, challenge yourself, stay out there. I'm glad to hear you guys are doing that. You will, you guys will improve and I appreciate your, your uh, inspiration and your suggestions and uh, awesomeness. Well, I'll give you another second here too to, to throw in another question or another suggestion that you want to help others because people mostly watch these afterward. We don't, we don't have like, you know, a large, large <laughs> following yet, but uh, people watch them on replay and, and they see your comments. So that's very helpful. But uh, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to kind of probably leave it at that and uh, get out there this weekend, make some beautiful paintings, stay encouraged, stay inspired. I'm going to put this video up here for you to click on next. Uh, it is my most popular video. I don't know why the tree painting video. Um, it's called before you oil paint trees know this. And I think we just have a lot of good information in there that's technical that uh, people didn't think about before. So uh, go ahead and uh, click on this painting right here on the trees. And hey, thanks for joining me. I'll see you over there in that next video. All right. Take care. God bless. See you up in the mountains. Later.